Welcome to Get the Word in Your Face International. This is Pastor Cheryl Jackson coming to you with the word from the Lord. God is good. He's good all the time and worthy to be praised. He is the Most High God, El Elyon, El Che, the Living God. He loves you. He loves us. He loves the whole world. But He loves you because you came to Him, because you, saw, you, you were searching for Him today. You want to hear what He has to say. You want him to touch your heart and strengthen you with strength in the inner man. He loves you. I, I really can't help but tell you that because it's true. Every day I wake up and I, and I think, oh, I love you, Lord. But it's really how he loves me. How he keeps I, our heart in mind. He keeps it even though things are topsy-turvy. Even though the world is wacky, even though the, the, everything in your mind is, is just wanting to just, ah, just scream out, find some solution, grab on to something, the Lord is there. In our franticness, in our despair, God is there. The Lord Jesus is there. The Holy Spirit is there to quicken us, to quicken this mortal body, to cause us to come into the kingdom of God and not live in the kingdom of despair, the kingdom of darkness, not live in a place where you feel hopeless. God didn't give us hopelessness. That is one of those those attributes that comes from the, the enemy, despair and hopelessness. God didn't give you a weight on your back, a weight around your neck. He didn't give you those things. He said, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. Come to me, all you who are heavy laden, I will give you rest, he said. You see, Jesus has a a kind and loving heart, a patient heart, one that always turns to the Father. He has, what is that, strength under control. He has controlled strength. In his meekness, it's controlled strength. He doesn't have to blurt out anything. He doesn't have to beat up himself with negative words. His strength comes from the Father. He doesn't look at himself in the mirror and say, Oh, how ugly I am, or how could they treat me this way? It's because I'm this, and it's because of this. He doesn't do that. Jesus knows who he is. He's always looking to the Father. He shows ex exactly how to live this life. How to live a life where your heart is completely given to God, and Nothing on the outside of us can tell us who we are in the spirit. And believe me, this world is more spiritual than it is physical because it was made from spiritual words. And though we live in this, this flesh and blood body, this flesh and blood body, this one right here, is not going into heaven with you. It's not going to be presented before God. This dead flesh will die. We get new bodies, a spiritual body. And my prayer is for us to start washing the soul of ours out in, in the water of the word so that we can have this, this, who we are, you know, this character, this nature, this not the world's nature or anything, but this, this who you are. Be with God forever. Uh, I wish I could spell, say that better. All I know is that God loves us. He loves you, and He wants you all for Himself. He's given you His Spirit. You don't have to live in despair in your heart from the neglect of others. Have they really neglected us, or has God put us in a place where we look to Him and lean on Him? We're accepted in the Beloved. We're accepted in God. And no one can take us out of the hand of the Father. No one can take us out of the name of the Son. We're in Him. But we can walk away. Not a lot of people believe that. <laughs>
but it is written. You make up your mind what you believe, and you walk in it. We can cry out, oh Lord, I love you. Go to church every Sunday and come home and act just like the world. Lean on our own understanding just like the rest of the world. Don't pick up this Bible to, to search out or to just get n to meditate. Don't sit here and drink up the word to be stronger in the knowledge of God. I mean, he reveals himself through the word. Anybody can pick up the Bible and read it, but it's him who reveals himself to those who want to know him. You will see the Lord Jesus. You will feel the strength of the Almighty. You'll taste the presence. You'll smell the presence. You'll know you're in the presence of God. Because you got, I mean, it, we've got spirit to spirit communication going on here. We got the Holy One training us to lay down this will of ours, this imagination of ours, and learn what it's really like to live in the spirit and not obey the lust of our flesh of how we feel today about whatever given situation we may walk into or whatever situation we are in. Whatever the circumstances are from whatever we've done, the Lord knows a way to work that thing out so that it's lighter on you and not as heavy. We can accept the mistake we've made, the misjudgment that we've made, and the Lord will give us the strength to walk through that circumstance until it's over. We can do it. Yeah. You no, know, I wrote the title as a stone in my heart, neglect. Neglect is a very powerful thing. And the, the devil will use it to thump your brain. Thump, 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 thump. You are alone. Nobody loves you. Nobody cares about you. They don't love you the way I love you. And you could ride all of that. You could ride the memories of your past. You can think down the line of everything that has ever hurt you. But you know what? Because of what Jesus has done, what he's brought us into, we are not alone. And we are not neglected. In fact, what, what, what's really happening here is that we're leaning on our own understanding and neglecting the word of God. I think I talked about this yesterday. And I, I, I'm kind of scared to go into the details, if I, if I can use that word, without anybody getting upset. <laughs> but you, you do. You get a little scared of uh, talking about the details of your life. But it just feels like I've been neglected all of my life. And no, I'm not looking for sympathy. The Lord is the strength of my life. He is the joy of my salvation. And I mean it with every breath I take. There's nobody that I want to hold on to better or more dearly than the Lord Jesus Christ and the Father of heaven and earth and the Holy Spirit and the angels that stand by my side. See, there's more of this, there's, there's more life than this life that we're living in, no matter how much it hurts from the things that we've been through. God takes away my, my sorrow. He has loved me right out of fear. Whatever other people could not give me, the Lord has more than supplied. In love, in peace. He, I mean, he, he is my salvation. I can't wait to meet him in the air. That's my, my desire. Because see, sin is in this world. And the people who sin affects is everybody, every single one of us. Our parents, our aunts and uncles, our cousins, our sisters, our brothers, the whole entire world is laying in wickedness. And their decisions and the, the decisions, the things that they think to do, they don't they don't always they don't always do it according to the spirit, now do they? If they did it by the spirit, they would know better than to hurt you. I mean, the commandments of God are to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength. Cleave to him and to love everyone else like yourself. Not just your sisters and brothers who are in church with you, but everyone else. We're supposed to be pursuers of peace, but that's not the word that is in 
the world, is it? And even for us who are saved, we make mistakes, but we're supposed to have a heart that runs to the throne room of grace, crying out for mercy, Father, forgive me for my sins and cleanse me from my unrighteousness so that we can go get this thing right with whoever we've offended. But just say that you've been offended with, in your whole life, it's just been one offense after the other, it seems. But you've just been neglected, beaten and battered and broken in the spirit. You know, parents, they didn't know what they were doing. They had a jolly old good time with this life, or maybe they didn't. Maybe they were just drunk all the time or on drugs all the time and on the street all the time. Maybe they ran a gambling thing through their home. I was raised in the world. I, I saw a lot of things. A lot of things affected the way that I grew up. And as even as I'm thinking, I can, there's some things that I can't even mention to you that were I saw as a child growing up. And I should have been covered better. I should have been more, you know, put in my parents' hands and covered and protected for, from from sexual lust from promiscuousness from drugs and alcohol for just living life and when I say that I mean no, not having any sense of saving money buying house nothing just out there <laughs> if you can get what I'm saying but there was a neglect there were children that were favored more than the other ones but it wasn't because it it wasn't it was I want to say that it was out of ignorance it was something that they couldn't see it's not that parents don't love you it's just that they cannot see I don't place my blame on my I don't place any blame on parents not like that God's the God's the judge Everything will be judged in the in the end end. But before then, while people are walking through life, we're we're desiring as a child I, I couldn't desire that. I didn't know it. But all the more so now I desire salvation for everyone who, who would be in my presence. I want to look like Christ. I want to forgive like Christ forgives. I forgave my parents. They didn't know. So then you go into the relationships of your life with people who don't live according to the word of God. They don't know it or they've got an, a religious attitude in it and they love you and hurt you at the same time. But I don't know how that love part is possible. No, I don't need a counselor, by the way. I'm, I'm all right. Believe me, I'm all right. The Lord keeps my heart and mind in perfect peace. But as I'm speaking these words to you, I'm speaking a word that maybe you've been neglected. But you've been neglected because of other people's own personal hurt. They don't know what they are doing. But our relationship with God it, it uproots all of this stuff, and we learn to love like he loves. We learn to love them when they can't love us. You know, the Bible says treat other people. Well, it doesn't say that. I don't think it says that. I, I read that. I just saw that somewhere. It, it, somebody had that on something. Treat people the way that you want to be treated. Treat others the way that you want to be treated. God wants us to love others the way that he's loving us. And that's an unconditional agape love. That, that's a forgiving love. He wants our hope to be in him, not in the people of the world. Those, if I think on those relationships of my past, my goodness, my life has been consumed with people who, who could not love me the way I needed to be loved. And I'm probably saying all that because, the, the, I mean, this person that just passed away, I really loved him. 
I cared for him so, so much. But he was blind and couldn't see. I, I bet I'm speaking for a lot of people. <laughs> but you don't sit down and go back into the past or into your present right now. We need to reach out for God. We need to have a belly filled with the word. We cannot afford to lean on our own understanding and just just be out here feeling, oh, I'm so neglected. Yes, they did that to you. Yes, they left you. And yes, they that hurt you. However, the situation panned out. Whoever it was, parents or, or, or siblings or friends, you know what? Our relationship with God is everything. He'll bring, bring you into the company of people who love you, who will have the same desires as you. And even if he doesn't, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. We have so much more life than what we're seeing in front of us. I just want to be about uh, all about doing good bringing us into this throne room of grace where we can find mercy and help in our time of need before God. He is our everything. Please don't give up on God. Don't give up on the Holy Spirit. Don't give up on what Jesus has already done for you. Now that's love. I don't know anybody who who died for me. Not with the love, not like the love that Jesus has for me. Listen, I'm in love with his love. Because he keeps my heart and mind. Nobody else that I've ever known in this life helps me to keep my heart and mind. Actually, that's not true. I do have a kid. I have one son. Who knows? <laughs> he knows. He, well, at least he used to. He knows. Mom needs help right now. <laughs> And just being there, and he knows that just being there is enough. But most of the time, it's been hard. It has not been easy. Because everyone deserves to be loved. And I'm so glad that God sent his son into this world to bring us into that place where we know that no matter what we're walking through, he is there. But casting your care before him is everything. Not crying and crying and crying about it and letting the devil ride your emotions with you. Because he does. He looks around for who he can devour. But we're supposed to resist him in the faith. Steadfast and in the faith. A heart given to God. See, this is why the first, the very first thing, I mean, this is Hebrews chapter 11 again. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Those who come to him must believe that he is. I mean, this is the number one. Those who come to God must believe that he is. And that's the place where my heart stays. That's where it dwells. God is. So how much, no matter how much I feel these other situations and circumstances coming trying to prevail over my mind I turn myself to his word I turn myself to do something good <laughs> I will get up and I will go to bed I was like okay I know me seven o'clock I'm tired I don't want to think about this no more I'm going to bed and you know every time the Lord gives me the strength <laughs> you need to close your eyes sometimes and just get the rest you need. The wisdom and the knowledge will come if we will just trust the Lord. Who knows how to work everything together for the good of those who love him, who are called according to his purpose? Who, who knows how to take the schemes of the devil and turn them around for our advantage, for our good? Who knows how to do that? It's the Father of heaven and earth. It's the, the Bible says in, in 1 John that if you fear that you're not made perfect in love, well, to be made perfect in love, mature in love, 
means to go through these situations and circumstances and lean on the one who really does love you with all of his heart, with all of his mind, with all of his strength, with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. He loves us. They love us. And they want us all for themselves. You know, if we understood how much God loves us, oh my goodness, we forget about this futile flesh of ours that cries out how we've been neglected and leans on our own understanding about everything that's going back to the grave. Hmm? Everybody in this world will have to give an account of their life before the living God. That's, I mean, that's why I want to hurry up and cast my cares before him. I don't want to give my flesh, the devil, or this world anything to ride on. I don't belong to this world. I belong to God. I don't belong to the kingdom of darkness. I belong to God. I belong to Jesus Christ. And I want to be filled with laughter. I want to be filled with joy. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Now, there is a psalm that comes to mind. Something that God promised me a long time ago. And he has more than fulfilled it over and over and over again. You know, if this life seems hard, it's because we're not leaning on the one who really does love us with everything. He gave us his son. He brought us into his house, into his kingdom. But we've been so blinded by the God of this world, by the by our flesh. and We've been so blinded and walking in our feelings. If we feel neglected, I'm telling you right now, you are not neglected by God. We just put our feelings into the wrong thing. Our feelings don't run this show. Faith runs this show, and God fills our heart with love. He's pouring his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. Believe what the Father is saying to you today. Don't harden your heart. Don't harden your heart. He gives us wisdom and he gives us knowledge. We just need to go sit down and be quiet sometimes and go rest. Pick up the word and, and eat it and drink it. Say, Lord, give me wisdom tonight. Show me the direction I need today. Keep my mind. Help me to keep my mind on things above and not beneath. We have been invited into the kingdom of light. We don't have to carry this heavy yoke, this burden of the flesh. We can carry the burden of life. And it's light because he is life. God is life. Jesus is life. Came to give us life and life more abundantly. Here's the scripture in, in Psalm 126. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then said they among the heathen, the Lord hath done great things for them. The Lord hath done great things for us. Wherefore, we are glad. Turn again, O, oh, but turn again our captivity, O Lord, as the streams of the south. Those that sow in tears shall reap in joy. But those tears are tears before God. And they're believing on the promise of God. They're believing, they're standing on what he said in your heart. You are meditating on whatever he said he would do for you. Understand this, that the Lord is with you. He is the strength of your life. He's the one we will see. This, this flesh and blood body will pass away and all the desires of it. We're going to have something so much better than what we've ever had. This earth suit was good for a while, but we're about to get something brand new. And we're going to be living in a love that is the love <laughs> that no one wants to do without. And everybody actually wants. They just can't see it because they're blinded by the blinder. Don't you be blinded. Take all of your cares and cast them before the Lord, but pick up the word of God, the word that he promised you, and put that in your heart. He'll help you write it. He writes it in your heart. He puts his word on your mind. We belong to God. Trust him today. Don't neglect God. Who cares about all these other people? Well, I'll be 60 next year. And life 
still hurts if I let it. But greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I tell you, the love of God is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The peace of God is my strength. Who he is, is our life. He gave life, he gave breath, he gave consciousness of himself for us, and I'm so grateful for that. He's my everything. Let him be your life. Let him be your everything. Because he's the only one who truly loves you with an agape love, an unconditional love. And he teaches us to love each other the same way. Even when people don't love you the right way, the way you think you ought to be loved. We lean on him and he fills us, he strengthens us with his love. I want to say he has a peace that surpasses all understanding, but what I really want to say is he has the love that surpasses our understanding, our comprehension. Stop leaning on the flesh and lean on God. Lean on our Father. Lean on Christ. Keep your mind stayed on Him. He's the author and finisher of our faith. Don't allow yourself to be consumed. Don't allow yourself to be weary because of these fleshly desires. God will bring you that love. Unless he, I mean, until He brings somebody else into your life like that, that loves like He loves. Don't be consumed with your flesh in this idea because then you'll you'll fall into the spirit of neglect you'll fall into that spirit of depression that comes from the devil it doesn't come from God the Lord loves you and he wants to fill you with the wisdom and the knowledge with the truth I pray that you want it like I do Cast your care before the Lord because he loves you. And you'll be strengthened with strength in the inner man to be able to overcome everything and, and do whatever good thing we are in this earth to do to help others. To love others. Now this is Pastor Cheryl Jackson at Get the Word in Your Face International. I'm still working on a stone in, in my heart. Today's word was neglect. But God lo God's love surpasses all of our understanding and brings us into a place, a clear, a clear place. I was thinking about Psalm 23. The Lord leads us into a, and he makes us to lay down in green pastures. He leads us beside the still waters. He's our shepherd. He's the king of kings, the Lord of lords. And you belong to him. We belong to God. Trust him today with all your heart. Don't lean on your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge him. He will direct your, your path. He'll strengthen you. We're going to be with him forever. We're going to be in his rule forever. This state is just temporary. Get your mind on Christ. Bye-bye.